Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Subaru Outback. This is a four-door mid-size crossover with seating for five. And this particular trim is the 2.5i Limited. Steering responsive fog lights up front and eyesight driver assist with adaptive cruise control. It also has an active grille shutter up front to decrease fuel consumption. As tested, MSRP of 34,135. To open the trunk, you can use a button on the key fob. Very large cargo area, over 35 cubic feet. Now with the rear seats folded down over 70 cubic feet of cargo space. So even enough room for me to lay down here. So underneath the floor cover, you've got your jack and some tools. And then underneath this, you have your spare tire. So let's have a look under the hood. Gas shocks for support. So checking out the engine bay, we don't have a tacky plastic engine cover, so that's nice to see. Everything here is pretty much functional. Uh, plenty of room around the engine. That, of course, to allow for fitting the 3.6 liter option. Now checking for serviceability, things are actually looking pretty good. The air filter over here, you've got quick tabs for release. You've got your engine oil dipstick, your engine oil filter right up on top. Very convenient engine oil fill coolant fill and radiator cap. You've got your battery up front and on the driver's side, but easily accessible windshield washer fluid and your brake fluid reservoir. And then here you have a fuse box, also easy to access, just two simple tabs to open that up. This is a 2.5 liter port injected boxer four cylinder, aluminum block and heads, dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder and variable valve timing on the intake valves. It has a compression ratio of 10.3 to one, has 175 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 174 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. Following the path of the intake air, it feeds in up front, passes through the air filter here on the left, then it's all the way back into the electronically controlled throttle body, and then it is split in the intake manifold between the four cylinders, where it then exits through the exhaust. A single exhaust pipe travels all the way to the rear, where it then exits through a single muffler. Power is sent through a CVT transmission to all four wheels and it can vary the torque split with active torque vectoring. 225 over 60 R18 Bridgestone tires all around. Up front 12.4 inch ventilated disc brakes matched with a McPherson strut style suspension. Here you can see the steering linkage, lower control arm and the anti-roll bar which does seem a bit small compared to some of the vehicles I've seen of this size. Checking out the other side, you can see the CV joint coming in with the drive axle and everything is pretty much painted to prevent rust. 11.8 inch ventilated disc brakes in the rear matched with a double wishbone style suspension, coil spring over the shock absorber. So here you have your upper control arm, toe adjustment down here, and then your lower control arm. So here you can see the drive axle coming in, the anti-roll bar right here, and your lower control arm down there on the bottom. You also do have an electronically controlled parking brake. So let's check out the interior. Keyless entry and unlocking it is as simple as grabbing the handle. Leather seats, power adjustable, and two memory settings. So checking out the interior, very similar to the Subaru Legacy I reviewed, as this is in many ways just a Legacy wagon. Um, so pretty much the same interior. You've got a leather wrapped steering wheel, pretty simple, with lots of controls on it, which I do like. Adaptive cruise control, um, fantastic system. Uh, Subaru calls this EyeSight in their vehicles, and it's great. I would highly recommend testing a vehicle out with adaptive cruise control. Um, it's a wonderful system and I explain it a lot more in detail on my legacy review. Now here you've got your audio controls and then down here you can scroll through several settings on your display. So your instantaneous fuel economy, your trip, how fast you're going, some directional information uh, and other fuel economy info. The seats, very comfortable, plenty of cushion um, and very wide seats. It is very spacious vehicle. Your legs, plenty of leg room. I'm not contacting anything with them, uh, especially you know once I've got my leg down on the accelerator pedal or the brake pedal. You do have soft touch to your left, and you also have automatic front windows for the left and right, and then you also have electronic control for the mirrors out there, uh, driver memory settings. Down here you've got a little instrument panel of different things that you can choose, so you've got your power lift gate, which you can open from here, your steering responsive fog lights, memory settings for the power lift gate, your traction and stability control systems, blind spot monitoring, lane departure, and your collision uh, detection system. So you can turn any of these systems off. This one, for example, so if it does see that you're about to come into a collision, it will break for 
you to try and minimize that. So the infotainment system, actually a really good touch screen. And one of the cool things about it is you can actually swipe on it. Um, and it's actually a pretty responsive screen for car systems. Uh, it's not a smartphone by any means, but it is pretty good and it is pretty responsive as far as whatever you select. Now, the audio system is very good in this limited edition. It's a 576 watt Harman Kardon system. Fantastic audio system. Uh, the navigation, like all navigation systems, it's much better if you just use your smartphone. The AC controls, you do have climate control and a uh, system down here. Very clean looking. Uh, the only thing, you know, that might be a concern is when you are selecting through the different modes, you have to just select through a little wheel here. So, you know, it could be nice just to have the exact thing that you want to select rather than scrolling through these different options. But overall, the system works fine and it is a nice clean look to it. You do have heated seats for both the front passengers, uh, three different settings. Here you have the electronic parking brake, uh, and then you have this hill assist mode, so it will hold the brakes for you until you tap the accelerator pedal if you are on a hill, uh, and then X mode. So what X mode does is it alters the CVT position typically towards a higher RPM. It also increases the active all-wheel drive engagement, and it increases the vehicle dynamic control to reduce wheel spin. And then if you are descending a hill, what it will do is control your speed, so you descend that hill at a constant speed. Now you do have a power moonroof and visibility overall is very good. Out the front to the sides, plenty of visibility. Checking your blind spot, you've got a nice open window there to look through. Looking behind you, nice large rear window. And you also do have a high definition rear view camera. So that's actually a pretty good display there. Seven inch screen for the limited. And then of course on your mirrors, you do have the blind spot detection. So visibility in this car, very good. Sitting in the rear, I have the front driver's seat adjusted to where I will be driving. I'm about 6'1". And as you can see, I still have plenty of leg room in the rear seats as someone who is 6'1". The rear seat's actually pretty good experience. You've got heated rear seats back here. You've got some AC vents, power windows. You do have this fold down cup holder and armrest. If you do end up sitting in the center, you know there actually is a decent amount of leg room. The drive shaft hump doesn't come up all that high, but you will still be splitting your feet. That said, you do also have a decent amount of room still above your head. Another clever thing that Subaru has done here with these rear seats is that the seat belt actually doesn't come over the seat itself. So when you do fold them down, it doesn't interfere with it. All right, let's take it for a test drive. Now, the throttle pedal on this with the 2.5 cylinder matched with the CVT does seem a bit punchy. Um, so you kind of have this a little initial spike in acceleration, and then after that, it's much more linear. So it does take a little bit of getting used to that, uh, just kind of the sensitivity of the throttle pedal for that first little bit of travel. It just kind of does seem a little touchy. The brake pedal feel, however, very good. Uh, good distance of travel and a nice progressive rate of resistance as you press down on it, correlating with how hard you're braking. So I do really like the brake pedal feel in this. The steering seems decently responsive, nothing too dramatic about it one way or the other. Fairly straightforward and simple to adjust to. Now, the 2.5 cylinder really isn't all that powerful. So if you do put your foot down, you're not gonna experience that great of G-forces. I mean, it's plenty of power if it's just you in the car. Uh, but I imagine if you had the trunk full with a bunch of gear and other people in the car as well, you know, you may be thinking, oh, I wish I had gone for the six cylinder. That said, the 2.5 seems pretty efficient with the CVT, so it is a decent option worth considering just because you can get good fuel economy out of it and it's a very practical car. Now, there is a lot of body roll, um, and this car does have some of the smallest anti roll bars I've seen of the cars I've reviewed. But, you know, body roll doesn't come purely down to anti roll bars. You can, of course, adjust the spring rates to compensate for that but it does seem to have a good amount of body roll and overall a very soft suspension and that just yields a very comfortable ride so it's not something I would complain about honestly it is a very comfortable car to drive around you are just going to have a decent amount of body roll and nose dive if you're hard on the brakes now it does come with paddle shifters so you can manually select through different gear ratios and it actually works really well so downshifts are very quick and upshifts are very smooth unlike the the Legacy, which I tested, which also had a CVT, the upshifts, it would kind of have a little bit of a jolt, whereas in this one, I don't notice it, uh, and the downshifts and upshifts are both very quick and very smooth. So overall, the paddle shifting system, I really do like. So driving on the highway, I've got the cruise control set at 65. It's actually pretty quiet in here, about 75 decibels. You do hear a little bit of wind and uh, road noise, 
but neither of them too bad overall pretty quiet and also worth mentioning is that using the adaptive cruise control system in this fantastic you can kind of just relax and let the car do the work for you other people ahead of you changing their pace it'll just match a certain distance and you can change what distance you'd like to follow them so a great system i'd recommend testing it out as an option for sure so i've completed my fuel economy test course this is about a 53 mile course primarily highway with some city and hills mixed in this car is rated 25 in the city 33 on the highway and as you can see it achieved 34.8 on my test course and this is pretty good considering you know the size of this vehicle its weight and the fact that it's all-wheel drive now one of the things that was surprising to me is just how good a fuel economy this got in fact it's even rated epa both city and highway better than the ford escape that i tested even though this car is heavier it has a larger engine and it's all-wheel drive so that's pretty impressive that it's posting that good of fuel economy numbers even though it is all-wheel drive so they've done a good job of creating an efficient system now this is a very practical vehicle you've got a lot of space so you can fit plenty of gear in the trunk you've got all-wheel drive and you You've got almost nine inches of ground clearance so you can take this thing pretty much anywhere and you can fit five adults so for the pacific northwest which is where i live you know something like this is actually kind of perfect for the outdoorsman who wants to take it you know on some rough areas and go backpacking or something like that where you can carry plenty of gear in the back and also take some friends with you so it's pretty ideal from that standpoint very practical car that can get pretty good gas mileage so thank you all for watching if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below